In today's video, I'm going to speak about how you can stand out as a PhD student. Now, the six areas I'm going to speak about today are very, very simple, but if you do the simple things well and accumulate all of these factors, you will stand out as a really strong PhD student. And the first area I'm going to speak about is teaching. If you want to become a lecturer when you finish your PhD, look at any job advert for a lecturer in position. You're going to see the advert looking for teaching experience, project supervision, marking assignments, leading modules, amongst many other areas. And you may be wondering, as a PhD student, how much experience should you get in teaching? There's no specific answer for this, but I would recommend for a year or two, do four to six hours of teaching a week. But make sure that you set an agreeable time period. If it's not agreed with a supervisor, you could end up getting additional load to your teaching that you didn't ask for, and it could have a negative impact on the PhD. Also make sure that you get paid as well. Most PhD programs will pay you to teach. If they don't, I recommend that you speak to another university nearby and try and do some guest lectures. But in general, I do recommend that you go away, speak to your PhD supervisor, and just inquire about getting some teaching experience. My second piece of advice is to collaborate on research projects. Again, like lecturing, if you want to work in academia when you finish that PhD, look at job adverts and you'll see this sort of stuff here. They want research publications, they want statistical skills and experience in the lab. And one question which I asked myself quite a lot during the PhD process was, is it about the quality of your work or the quantity? And really it is about the quality. You want high impact journal papers, but you need a bit of quantity in there as well to stand out in academia. And I'm going to give you two examples here of different PhD students. You've got student A and student B. So let's say student A has done what's expected. They've got four publications from their PhD and they're all first author papers in a good journal. That's great. Let's look at student B now, who's done exactly the same as student A, but they've also done some additional collaborations where they're the second or third author on a paper. I recommend you follow the route of student B. How can you collaborate? What can you do? Well, it depends on your strengths. For example, it could be data collection. If you're really good in the lab, get involved in that area. If you're really good at statistics and the lead author isn't so good at a certain area, such as qualitative, and that's your area, do that. Or it could be academic writing. This is quite good if you're at the latter stage of a PhD, a new PhD student comes in, they're writing their first paper. You can help them with the writing. You can help them with certain sections of the paper. If you do that, your name's on the paper and it adds to your CV. So in general, I recommend that you help other PhD students with their research, but really it's all about give and take. So make sure they're helping you as well. My third piece of advice is to go to academic conferences. And they're a great way to visit new places and to socialize, which I'll touch on in a second. But in general, I recommend that you go to as many conferences as you can throughout the year. And you don't always have to present. You can just attend and network. That's also really good. And try and get some funding back as well. Not just the big conferences, but even if it's just a webinar that's 30, 50 quid, try and get some money back for that as well. But really, I think conferences are great for a number of reasons. First of all, it's a learning curve. You don't just learn about topics from other people. You will learn how to put together a PowerPoint. You'll learn how to present you'll learn how to answer questions under pressure, which is all good practice for that dreaded viva further down the line. It's also a chance for you to network and ask questions. So I would ask questions just after the presentation, but also hang around, speak to that person if they're of interest to you after the presentation is finished, or even around the lobby, have a coffee with them. And also in general, just be sociable. Don't hide in the hotel, don't kind of be a ghost around the lobby, get to know people. And to summarize this section, don't just attend conferences. I know so many people who attend and they just hover around in the background and don't really gain anything from that experience. Make sure that you speak to people and try and make things happen. Moving on now to point number four, I recommend you get some applied experience which relates to your PhD. I was very lucky myself when I was in Germany doing my PhD to get experience with Borussia Dortmund and TSG Hoffenheim. These experiences came in different ways. Dortmund was just part of my contract. I was very lucky just to be told to go there. Whereas Hoffenheim was about my interpersonal skills, getting to know people at the club and getting them to invite me to come back and work with them. And I recommend you do something similar there. You need to think about what am I gonna do when this PhD is over? 
I'm gonna to speak to people, I'm gonna try and make stuff work and get some experience. And also ask how much experience do you need and how much time have you got? There's no specific answer, that's down to you, but it could be one day a week, it could be a couple of days a month, it could be whatever suits you. But like the teaching, you need to set an agreement with the company. I was lucky with Dortmund, we just had the date set, we knew when we were going there. Half a nine was pretty similar. But it's not always that easy. Some companies can't move the goalposts and give you more work that you don't want because you're really busy with a PhD. So be careful with this. Do seek that practical experience, but make sure, if you can, that you're getting manageable working hours so you can concentrate on that PhD. My penultimate piece of advice is to create a social media presence. And there's different ways of doing this. I'm gonna give you a few ideas now. Starting off with number one, LinkedIn. LinkedIn I recommend you get. It's a great way to connect with other PhD students, but more importantly, professionals in the area you want to go into after the PhD. I recommend you post, don't just connect with people, actually make yourself heard. Speak about conferences, a picture of you teaching, your latest paper that's been published, whatever it is, speak about that on LinkedIn. Even if you find that a little bit uncomfortable at the start, you'll get used to it. Twitter, I highly recommend. It's actually my favorite platform on social media for academics. It's a great way to connect, just like LinkedIn, but it's more active, there's more going on. You can keep up to date with the latest research, goings on in your area, and I recommend you tweet and retweet about professional areas of interest. Try not to be really unprofessional on this platform. And this is where you can speak about your research papers or your research topic, conferences, whatever it is, try and stick to those areas when you're on your professional Twitter. What you could also do is set up an Instagram account or TikTok where you create a blog where you speak about your PhD, or you could give advice to other students who are going through a similar process to you. I'd recommend doing one or two posts a week with high quality and just be more fun, be more creative. You can do stuff on TikTok and Instagram which is just less serious compared to Twitter and LinkedIn. I'd also recommend YouTube. It's really helped me with my job applications, making me stand out a little bit more. What you speak about is up to you, but you could do a PhD vlog, such as a day in the life of a PhD student. You could speak about some of the common issues that you go through during a PhD. You don't have to create loads of videos and you don't have to worry about the number of views or subscribers as well. As long as it's on your CV, it's a positive action and it'll make you stand out. And in a similar vein, you could also consider doing a podcast. And the way you do it would be totally up to you, of course, but you could speak to loads of people in your area or you could speak to one student from a different area each time. You don't have to do lots of podcasts because there's probably not much time, you've got your PhD to focus on, but let's say you do 12 a year and your PhD is three years, that is a lot of podcasts that you can speak about on your CV, your cover letter. It's just another way of standing out. So in general, I recommend that you get yourself on social media don't be shy, share your accomplishments, share your personality across multiple social media outlets. My final point is very short and simple. You need to think about getting additional accreditation or qualifications on top of that PhD. It's very competitive and when you're looking at job adverts at the end of the PhD, you'll see in the desirable category stuff like this, basis accreditation or UKSCA or if you're going for a lecturing role, teaching qualifications. And what I recommend you do is think about what you want to do in the future, look at job adverts, consider the qualifications you will need to get. Do this as early as possible. Don't wait until the end of the PhD to figure this out. Do it early so you've got time because some of these qualifications or accreditation can take six months or 12 months. Thank you for watching this video. I've got lots of content on my channel in relation to careers and PhDs as well. If you have any questions specifically that you'd like to ask me, get in touch with me on Instagram at Sports Science Hacks. Okay, thanks for tuning in, and I'll speak to you again soon.